Fox Sports welcomes you to the following presentation of the National Football League. Before this wild card matchup, we'll send you down to the sideline. First check in with Tom Rinaldi. Well, Joe, gusty and swirling winds will greet Jalen Hurts for the first playoff start of his NFL career against a quarterback, making the 46th such start of his. Hurts, three years old when Tom Brady made his playoff debut. There's respect there, but if you expected deference or genuflection, Hurts really didn't provide it to us this week. He said Tom's been doing it for a minute, and then with a laugh, He's pretty seasoned. As for experience in big games, he played in the national championship right here in Tampa for Alabama in 2017. He said he finds value in all games that he's played. It'll help serve him in this one. For our own playoff veteran, let's go to the other side and Aaron Andrews. Well, Tom Brady telling us this week his offense has literally been a juggling act all season long, and that will continue here in the playoffs today. We know the wide receivers that are out, but how about the hit this running back's room took? They're without top back Leonard Fournette, as Troy mentioned, and also Ronald Jones. That's nearly 50% of the Bucks' total offense that won't be on the field today. Bruce Arian saying our motto is we're going to score points. We don't know how we're going to do it or who's going to do it, Joe Buck. But they're looking to score some points today. Yeah, there's no doubt, Aaron. They just leave it up to 12 in that offensive line. Spanish language broadcast available today on Fox Deportes. And we are glad you're with us on a 66-degree day here on the 16th of January. And the wind 19 miles per hour with gusts up to 25. Philly won the toss. They defer. Bucks get the ball at their 25. Aaron just gave you a list of who's not there for Tom Brady. He does get Giovanni Bernard back at running back. And Keyshawn Vaughn has taken a step forward at running back. A third-round pick last year. They're the numbers with the career ranks this season in many ways getting better with age. Threw for over 5,300 yards during the regular season. They start with Vaughn and Keyshawn Vaughn right up the gut of this defense out across the 40. Got a good block from the all-pro Tristan Wirfs, their right tackle. Yeah, I'll say you watch him come around and he cleans it up. And Keyshawn Vaughn, he gets right in behind him. Nice lane to open up this game for Keyshawn Vaughn in the running game. Bucks right back to the line of scrimmage. Bernard is not able to make the catch. Wasn't anything out there anyway as Singleton was ready to bring down Gio Bernard, who has missed the last four games, but able to answer the bell here today. Here's the offensive line. You can see by those Pro Bowl nods how good that offensive line is. They allowed a league-low 23 sacks this year. Pass is incomplete for Tyler Johnson. Actually, Brashad Perryman, and a flag is down in the backfield where Brady went down. Personal foul, mm. roughing the passer. Defense, number 96. It's a 15 yard penalty, automatic first down. It's against Derek Barnett, and instead of third and 10 because oh, wow. of that low hit. Uh, yeah, yeah, you can't go low, but come on. He pulls up, didn't hit him with much force at all. I don't agree with the call. A big call, too. Tom misses an open pyramid over there on that right sidelines, but they get a new set of downs because of the penalty on Barnett. That's the fourth unnecessary roughness penalty against Derek Barnett this season. Mike Pereira is here. We'll check in with him. As a handoff is to Vaughn. Two good carries for him, and Mike Pereira, let's go back on that flag on Barnett. I agree with Troy. It, listen, it's knee area or below, but this is up in the hip, so it's not really a low hit and should not, in my opinion, should not have been called. Four-yard carry by Vaughn, and now the pass off the hands and nearly picked off with Perryman, the target on that right side and Steven Nelson almost came away 
with a takeaway. And now it's like Tristan, Tristan Wirth, Wirth yeah. who has played every snap for two seasons in the NFL, is down, and the All-Pro needs attention. He was trying to get up. It looked like he was on one knee and just can't do it. He goes back down to the ground. This offensive line, like you mentioned, Joe, they've stayed relatively healthy all season long, and they've missed very few snaps. They'll check on worse. We'll take a break. Third down for Tampa Bay when we come back. Burger King, get the $5 your way meal with the Double Whopper Jr. Well, Tristan Wirfs needs assistance to get off the playing field. We'll show you where we think the issue might have started as Josh Wells takes over at right tackle. And Wirfs is out. Tristan, one of three players in the league to play every offensive snap the last two years. It's third down and six for Tampa Bay. Good protection. Brady finds Evans, who finds a first down. Let's go back to the Tristan Wirfs injury. This was the play before, so three plays ago, he kind of gets that right leg trapped and rolled up on. And then on the next play, which is when he went down, it was just at the end of the play, and you see him grab that right lower leg. On first down, Evans now on this side of the field. Not much as he's wrapped up by Avante Maddox. Gain of two. And one of the keys to success, while they've lost Chris Godwin and Antonio Brown walked away, and they're without Ronald Jones and Leonard Fournette, is that offensive line and how healthy they've been all year. Brady steps up and is able to complete. Catch is made by Gio Bernard. And that takes it down to the 24-yard line, a gain of six. And I think that's what they missed over the last few weeks is someone out of the backfield. Gio Bernard with Leonard Fournette not activated. He can do those kinds of things. Third down and short, high throw, but complete first down. And there he is again. So Bernard misses four weeks. Comes right back and heavily involved here in the first possession of the game. Yeah, it was just too easy. And I know in talking with Jonathan Gannon, the defensive coordinator for the Eagles, says we have to challenge these guys more than what they did week six. Bernard's in the backfield. He just comes out on a little flat route. Not a great throw, but there was nobody within 10 yards of him. And when he's in the lineup, you have to anticipate that, that he becomes a threat as a receiver. On first down, Brady pass over the middle to O.J. Howard, who had a nice game when these two teams met in Philadelphia week six, a gain of three. T.J. Edwards made the stop for Philadelphia. Well, you watch Brady, and, and he's just surgical in where he's going with the football. We're getting a lot of different looks from Philadelphia defensively with their coverages, but Brady, you've been doing it as long as he has. You're not going to fool him. He knows exactly where you're vulnerable, and he's getting the ball out quick. Tenth play of the drive, it's great, gets a block, and takes it down inside the five. With another first down for Tampa Bay, it's first and goal. Yeah, you got great split out wide, Donovan Smith, the left tackle, and when he comes out, these DBs are not able to take these guys low, and so they got to try to hold up, and you see Steven Nelson, he just gets blown up. It's not even a fair fight when they go that, with that quick screen and you got offensive linemen out on the perimeter. When we talked to Tom Brady, he told us, I figure out what to do with a ball before I ever touch it, as opposed to so many quarterbacks in the league and these RPOs getting the snap, reading it. He knows where he's going with it right now if he's going to put it up. Instead, he hands off and Vaughn to the two. Second down and goal. Well, this has been a nice drive. To start this drive, Brady was a little bit off on some of his throws, but uh, they had a chance. If they don't get the penalty, they would have gotten Tampa into a third and long. Instead, a new set of downs, and here they are inside the five. So back off that MCL injury, Giovanni Bernard back in. Three runs on this initial possession, eight throws. 
spectacular. Another one on one at the bottom. They hand to Bernard. And he is in for the touchdown. Pretty nice block there by Perriman and also Rob Gronkowski. He gets into the action, handed off Gio Bernard. They split him out. They motion him back into the backfield, hand it off, and they capitalize on the, on the drive with a touchdown. It's a great way to start this game for Tampa Bay. Giovanni Bernard, longtime Cincinnati Bengal. And congratulations to Joe Burrow and the Bengals. Zach Taylor, their first playoff win in 31 years, came last night. And the Buccaneers, the defending Super Bowl champion Buccaneers, strike first here today. There's the penalty on Derek Barnett. They lost Tristan Wirfs. But Tom Brady, they still got 12, and they've got 7. 7-0, seven Buccaneers. History is filled with almost... Today's game is sponsored by Crypto.com, the world's fastest growing crypto app. Welcome back to Raymond James Stadium here in Tampa, Florida. Aerial coverage brought to you by Tubi. Buccaneers and Tom Brady won the Super Bowl in their home stadium last year. That's considered a neutral site, however, and this is the first home playoff game since the 2007 season for the Buccaneers franchise. And now we'll see how the Eagles answer. And we look at Jalen Hurts. And this, Troy, after we talk to both players and coaches, is a quarterback that they believe in. They do believe in, in him, and, and the organization does. More importantly, the players do. And I really think this staff, Nick Sirianni and his offensive staff in particular, deserve a great deal of credit. Uh, they basically pivoted with their offensive philosophy after that loss to Tampa Bay. They went to things that Jalen Hurts is more comfortable doing. He's a natural in the pocket when he has the ability to run. And they've been the best running football team since week six. Here is a toss to Sanders picking his way. Out across the 30 in a gain of seven to start the day for the Eagles. And we look at this offense which was the top rushing offense, 14th overall, and they have their four-time All-Pro center, Jason Kelsey, in the middle of it all. Yeah, he's been a stalwart here with the Philadelphia Eagles for a long time now. Making another Pro Bowl, got his first-team All-Pro bid, and has just been outstanding. Second down and three. Scott out of the backfield makes the catch. Devin White with a strong tackle to bring up third down and two. Well, this defense gets a big piece back in Levante David playing next to Devin White inside. They get Jason Pierre-Paul back and Shaq Barrett back for this playoff game. The number 13 overall defense in the league. Well, I mentioned it coming into this game and the yards that Tampa Bay's given up on the ground. A big reason for that has been that they've been without Levante David for the last few weeks. A little different challenge for Philadelphia today. Hurts keeps and goes down. Jordan Whitehead made the play. And it's three and out for the Eagles to start their afternoon. Uh, Jordan Whitehead plays this so well. Jalen Hurts is kind of in no man's land. He's not real sure whether to hand it to Sanders or keep it, and he chooses the wrong one. He keeps it. Whitehead is right there to make a play, and if he does, it, if he does hand it off to Sanders, Levante David's coming off the edge to take him as well. Great execution by Tampa Bay defensively knowing what they had to do on their assignments. Sipas shanks one again. He had two last week. And the first-year punter hits a clunker to the 41. Just a 29-yard punt. And the Buccaneers lead by seven, have good field position. Second time they have it. Team is sponsored by Ford. Built for America. 
The many faces of Tom Brady's played in three different decades through five presidents, seven rings, five Super Bowl MVP awards, three MVPs for the league, several hairstyles, two teams, one goat, and just rolling right along. I'm not sure he was ever ugly, but I think he's gotten better looking as he's gotten older. <laughs> Here's a handoff out to the 45-yard line is Keyshawn Vaughn. Meanwhile, after that punt, it ends up being a 27-yard punt by Aaron Sipos, who shanked two last week. It is a windy day, but you see Byron Leftwich, the offensive coordinator, now interviewing for head coaching jobs, pointing to where it should be placed. And moved it two yards during the break. Defender fell down, and the pass is caught by Perryman. Short of first down yardage and a gain of five. Yeah, Perriman, he got tripped up a little bit, but had he been able to catch that on the run, uh, he might have been able to split it. Because like you said, the defender, it was Steven Nelson, he went down on the play. Third down and three. Passing complete for Tyler Johnson. It's been a little off here in the early going. You can see Brady's just not happy about it. Some of these throws that look like Brady's really off here in the early going has been more that he's expecting Tyler Johnson there to stay on the run. And you can tell the frustration that he has. And so you're letting that ball go when he pulls up and he's not running through the catch. If he, if he does run, he catches it in stride and he has a nice gain first down and they're not punting. So just more poor execution really by Tampa more than anything that Philadelphia did defensively. Now Pinion. <laughs> Knuckling kick and a fair catch hauled in by Jalen Rager. So good job by the Eagles defense. And then that miss from Brady to Tyler Johnson. Eagles get it right back down seven. down that was incomplete Tyler Johnson there in the slot and as he comes across you see him start to throttle there he sees coverage out in front of him and he's just thinking that he needs to slow down Brady on the other hand anticipates that he's going to run through it probably should make that catch anyway but you know some of of course Tyler Johnson now in his second year he, he's played enough but just they're just a little bit off on a few of those throws it's happened now three or four times here in this in this first quarter Eagles went three and out first time they had it. Hurts keeps, goes over the right side, gets a block out on the edge. And that was Jack Stoll, backup tight end out there leading the way for a gain of nine. Get Jalen Hurts going, running the football. And what's interesting about Philadelphia is we see Stoll running off the field is that they trade Zach Ertz. The, it, after he finished the game week six against Tampa Bay and after these coaches got together and started evaluating what they were doing, they, they started then running more two tight end personnel, which was ironic that they just traded a pretty good player. But that's been the, a big part of their offense, two and three tight ends for this running game. Hurts flagged down, pass incomplete. And the flag thrown at the beginning of the play. Jason Pierre-Paul with pressure. Offside. Defense, number 90, lined up in the neutral zone. It's a five-yard penalty results in a first down. So Jason Pierre-Paul, who had missed the last three games, as a tear in his shoulder is right there on the end and in the neutral zone. So basically a free play and the penalty results in first down. Here is a handoff to Sanders and tripped up. Whitehead again. A loss of five on first down. Well, Jordan Whitehead's off to a good start in this ball game. He's got great speed, and he is a physical player. He was up there in the box already, and he sees Sanders get the ball, and he just hits it. 
That's one of the areas where Tampa Bay has had some issues over the last few weeks. A lot of teams have been able to get on the edge, on the perimeter against them. Philadelphia did on the one play with Jalen Hurts. They tried two with Sanders, but Whitehead was there to make the play. Hurts throws. Pass is caught and out of bounds at the 35 is Miles Sanders who's playing just a couple of weeks removed from that broken hand he suffered against the Giants. Missed two games. Says he's good to go and not limited in any way. That last play good for six. Well, Philadelphia, they have to be prepared for Todd Bowles in this blitzing defense. Nobody blitzes more than Todd Bowles. You better have some answers, especially here at third and long. Good protection for Hurts. That's tipped and nearly picked off as the rookie Joe Tryon Shoyinka got his hand on it. It's a heck of a job by him. He's really come on. He's a really talented guy. The first round pick out of Washington has done a lot of good things. He gets his hand on it. It looked like Jamel Dean almost is able to make this play. Just not quite, but that would have been a disaster for Philadelphia. Better punt this time. With Darden not calling for a fair catch and lucky to hang on. Really well played by Josiah Scott downfield after a 36-yard punt. Not much on offense for the Eagles yet. Down by seven. Wild card weekend around the National Football League. First of three games today. San Francisco at Dallas next up on the docket. And then back to the AFC tonight on NBC with Pittsburgh and Kansas City. Let's go down to Aaron Andrews. What do we know about Tristan Wirfs? Well, he has returned from the locker room, Joe, with that right ankle heavily taped. He was trying to put some weight on it, move around with the training staff and see what he could do. Now he's over on the sidelines, actually sitting on the bench. They said he's questionable to return, but he looks visibly upset, kind of shaking his head back and forth. Here's Gronk with a catch and a first down to the 45. Anthony Harris on the stop, but not before Rob Gronkowski got 13. Well, the Eagles bring pressure, and Anthony Harris is the one who's in coverage. A good route by Gronkowski as Harris takes an angle thinking he's going to stay on the cross, or he pivots out, gives himself some separation. Pass to Gronk again. Gets hit by McLeod, but not before Gronkowski got eight. And Tom Brady now with... Eight completions to six different receivers here in the early going. Pretty good combination with him in 87, and it has been for a long time, and especially here over the last two weeks. He's been the real playmaker for Brady in the last two games they've played. Tampa Bay now going to a little bit of a hurry up. Pass is caught, and this time Brady should be happy. Tyler Johnson reached out, hauled it in. Good catch for 17 yards. Yeah, but he pauses again. You're going to see he throttles it down, and Brady's expecting him to continue to run. So they're just a, they're just a little bit off. I think the result's the same. They've got Eagles are there to make a play, but that's that's why some of these throws are just looking like they're a little bit extended more than what they should be had they been thinking the same way. Brady, good protection, and Gronkowski, the target incomplete with Anthony Harris in coverage. Terry still has money to give somehow, and you still have a chance to win it. Scan the QR code now and enter the Fox Super 6 wildcard contest for a free chance at $100,000. Just download the Super 6 app now and play for free. Brady won a penalty. Felt that Gronkowski as he's trying to take the middle of the field, right? here gets held I, I think it's a good no call but if you open up the middle of the field you better be prepared for 87 to be running down the middle of it pass is caught Evans first down plus
And 16 yards from Mike Evans. Boy, Mike, Mike Evans, it looked like it was Avante Maddox who was in coverage on him, and he just completely turns him around. Really good job coming off the ball. He's inside in the slot. That's why Maddox is on him. Typically, Darius Slay will stay on the outside. He's matched up with him here now. But when he moves inside, Slay typically will not go with him. Brady throws. Evans makes the catch and takes it down near the five. Went around Avante Maddox and picked up eight. Uh, that's, a, that's a throw. You just got to beat the defender with the football. The Eagles give a little bit of a different look. They go soft with Slay on the outside. They're trying for Maddox to be able to undercut that. He's a little late getting there. Brady beats him with the ball. Flag flies on the play as Keyshawn Vaughn runs it up into the pile. Stood up near the two. Uh, just another flag comes in. And now there's one in the end zone and one in the field of play. I think the Eagles. I they may have gotten people. Philly, yeah, for extra men on the field. That's what Brady was looking for and was satisfied that the flag was thrown, but then another flag came in late. There are two fouls on the play, 12 men on the field, defense, offside, defense, both on number 93. Both penalties are declined. The result of the play is a first down. Sets up first and goal as Milton Williams, the rookie from Louisiana Tech, who's been playing better and better, was guilty of both calls. Yeah, they really like him a lot, and... He's going to get, you know, even more playing time with Josh Sweat not activated today. Josh Sweat sick all week. I understand it was a serious situation early in the week. Tried to get ready to play, could not answer the bell. Handoff is taken by Vaughn down inside the one as Anthony Harris made the tackle. Second and goal. It's another good drive by Tampa Bay. I like what Tom Brady has done. They picked up the pace there for a number of plays, and that's a big part of offensive football is being able to dictate tempo, and it's not always up-tempo. Sometimes it's slowing things down like they're doing right now, and you just keep the defense a little bit on their heels and not sure about substitutions. They catch them with 12 men. But really good execution on this drive by Tampa. Three tight ends in the game for the Bucks. Hand off here, and Vaughn walks in for the touchdown. Giovanni Bernard with the first score, and now Keyshawn Vaughn, and a player is down around the one-yard line. Can't tell who exactly that is on the field. Good that, job by Keyshawn Vaughn. Great execution up front. That's their center, Ryan Jensen. Wow. You know, we talked about it, how healthy they've been up front all season long. It's been the key to their success. They had three Pro Bowlers this year, and they may be playing the rest of the game without two of them. So Ryan Jensen is down and in pain, a man who's made 81 straight regular season starts. We'll check on him before the extra point. Oh. Box now or Hulu. Well, Ryan Jensen, who was just named to his first Pro Bowl, Got bent over backward in the middle of that pile a moment ago on the touchdown run by Keyshawn Vaughn. And you can see him in a lot of pain. He refused any help to get over to the sideline. And this crowd during the break went crazy for him. Tom Brady absolutely loves him. We'll just have to hope for the best for Ryan Jensen. Here's the extra point now with 25 seconds left in the first quarter. And 
As Ryan Suckup knocks it through. Next Level Chef is TV's number one new show. The chefs cook for their lives and the mentors try to bring their teams to victory. But has Gordon Ramsay met his match? The battle continues on Next Level Chef all new Wednesday on Fox. Well, the start for Tampa Bay has gone about as well as they could have hoped. The last few games, they've gotten off to slow starts. They found themselves behind, and we're hoping to be able to come out and get out ahead and kind of put the pressure on Philadelphia and whether or not they're going to, how long they're going to be able to hang with that running game. So a good start for Tampa, scoring on two of their three drives. Tom Brady told us when we talked to him a couple of days ago that he anticipated the Eagles making them drive the ball, meaning no big plays, keep everything in front of him. And so far, Brady 12 for 16, 103 yards, and that one completion over 10 yards. Yeah, they always, the Eagles have done a good job this year of not giving up the, the big plays, and then you just hope that you, you're able to make a stop on a third down, and, you know, that's something that they've just not done a very good job of. Tampa Bay's two for three on third downs here in this first quarter. So air yards not expected to be big for Tom Brady, but run after the catch will be. And with under 30 seconds left in this first quarter, Pinion will kick it away. Chance here for Gainwell. And the rookie hauls it in, crosses the 20, and now out to the 27. Brought down by Jamel Dean. Well, let's look at the Philadelphia Eagles season. And they have been soaring as of late, winning seven of their last ten after that two and five start. Number one rushing offense in the NFL. And the only first year head coach to get his team into the playoffs, Nick Sirianni, saying we didn't come this far to only come this far. Well, that is true, but at the same time, you know, their success over the second half of the season, they weren't playing real good football teams. They haven't faced a good quarterback since week nine against Justin Herbert and the Chargers. Here's Sanders left side gets two. So this is the first real test that, that they've had. And I also know that no matter who you've played, you start to gain some confidence when you are having success. But this is a little bit different challenge with Tampa's defense and their players back that they've been without here over the last few weeks. One quarter in the books. Buccaneers have 14 points. Eagles 17 yards so far. Trying to get it going on this possession. Back after this from your local Fox station. Ordinary tissues burn when Theo blows, so Puffs Plus Lotion rescued his nose with up to 50% more lotion. Second down and eight for Philadelphia as we open the second quarter here in Tampa, Florida, and it's a bad time for that stat. 17 total yards in the first quarter, fewest of any quarter this season. Haven't called out the name Dallas Goddard or Devontae Smith. Their two biggest weapons on offense yet. Haven't been targeted as Hurts is protected and the pass is incomplete with Goddard the target and we'll send it down to Tom Rinaldi. Joe on a roster where 29 Eagles are making their playoff debut. Nick Sirianni spent some time showing two video clips to try to help his team prepare. One from the first Rocky movie where Rocky appears to be knocked down but finds a way to get off the canvas to continue to challenge Creed. The other when the late great Kobe Bryant addressed the Eagles before their successful Super Bowl run showing a simple defensive breakdown that ultimately led to an NBA Finals game loss. The message determination and discipline that's what we have to rely on through four quarters they need it now third down and eight for Nick Sirianni's crew and Hertz is sacked wrapped up by Antoine Winfield and the two safeties for Tampa Bay off to a good start Winfield and Whitehead yeah they come off the pressure they come off the edge with two Winfield comes off the left side Jamel Dean comes off the right side of this defense and they drop out Vita Vea, so they change up the look. Todd Bowles does, and trying to sort it out is the challenge, and they're not able to do it, and they get home on Jalen Hurts. 
Three possessions for the Eagles, one first down. It came via penalty. Here's a line drive punt by Sipos, and on a hop, it's Darden. And Darden staggers after that hit by T.J. Edwards. And a four-yard return. We're back after this from Progressive. Oh, there's my little nephew. He looks more like Dad every time I see him. Dad is old. Right. So your message said you wanted to talk about insurance? I said I want you to talk about insurance. Well, most people know that bundling home and auto saves you money. Keep saying your words. But did you know that new customers who bundle and save with Progressive can save an average of $800? Sleeping baby. I love you too. Well, how about Ryan Jensen right back in there for Tampa Bay? Left with that injury, got looked at inside the tent. Buccaneers get it back, and out he comes. Well, that's big. It's big for Tom Brady. It's big for the entire group, but especially the quarterback. Play action from Brady, who throws Evans. And that was a downfield throw and a pickup for Brady of 18, his longest completion of the half. Well, it's the matchup that you're going to see when they lock up. We've got Darius Slay, the Pro Bowl player, against Mike Evans, and Mike Evans just runs an outstanding route. He gets Slay running. He puts his foot in the ground, comes back out towards the boundary, and Tom Brady puts it right on him. Eight straight 1,000-yard seasons for Mike Evans, a record to start a career. Passes to Evans again as he sits down with a nice pickup of nine. Brady knew exactly where he was going with the ball. Slay that time is in off coverage. He knew he had one-on-one. -on -one and without all of the weapons that he typically has, if he gets that look with Evans, I, I assure you he's going to continue to throw him the football. Here's Vaughn for a first down and no answers for this Eagles defense yet. No, they're really mixing it up. And you take a look here at the experience that Brady has in this postseason relative to everyone else. Of course, he's been doing it a long time, and you pile up a lot of wins when you've won seven Super Bowls. <laughs> That's the way it works. Yeah, 34-11 and 11 in his postseason career. There's Miller. And Scotty Miller, who dealt with a turf toe injury the majority of the year, might be counted on a little more heavily here in the postseason with the injuries and Antonio Brown walking away. I like Scotty Miller. It seems that Tom Brady made a career throwing to guys like him. And yeah, he's going to get more opportunities. He's leaving the field now, but you can you can you can really feel Tom Brady heating up. Hand off to Vaughn, another first down. And I think Nick Sirianni is going to have to find more video or another movie to show at halftime. <laughs> Rocky Five. There's Jonathan Gannon, and I, you know, I, I, I continue to say I like what Tampa's done. They're mixing up the run. They're getting the quick passing game, gotten the ball to Mike Evans. They're, they're mixing up the tempo offensively as well. Eagles need a stop. Here's Vaughn. Hit in stride, takes it down inside the 20, and T.J. Edwards able to hang on for a gain of six for Keyshawn Vaughn. Jonathan Gannon on Tom Brady. The first time he played us, he was on autopilot, and that was my fault. This time we have to make him work, and he was talking more about being a little more intense on second down, now waiting for third. Here's a completion down just inside the five to Tyler Johnson. And no stops coming yet. Well, he's just got, Tom Brady's just got the Eagles defense reeling. You know, they don't know where they're getting hit. And Tyler Johnson in the slot. Good route by him. Ball's on him, but they're mixing up the quick passing game. They've gotten the ball to the backs, right out of the backfield. And then they've, they, they've hit some of the intermediate stuff as well. And then along with the running game. Brady keeps, throws, passes off the hands of Mike Evans with Darius Slay right on him. I mentioned earlier that the Eagles haven't faced a top quarterback since week nine. I don't count last week against the Cowboys. Dak Prescott, of course, being one of those guys. 
But the Eagles, they didn't. They are. They hardly played anybody. So I, I totally dismiss what took place in that in that game. Even though Dallas was able to put over 50 points on the board, but against good quarterbacks and good offenses, this defense has really struggled all season. Second and goal, little push pass and drag to the ground is Bernard. Good play and a big play by Ryan Kerrigan. Eagles needed that, a loss of four. Yeah, Kerrigan, he comes up the field. He doesn't know that Bernard is in motion. And as he's coming up to rush Brady, uh, he, he has the ball right in his lap. This is a big third down now for Philadelphia to just get out of this. Hopefully, only giving up three, maybe he misses a field goal, but certainly can't go down 21. Brady is sacked. And Jonathan Gannon's defense found some answers there inside the 10. A loss of seven on that sack, Derek Barnett. And Javon Hargrave back there for Philly. He was looking for Gronkowski right from the start. He thought he had a matchup that he was going to get, and just good pressure. The four-man rush has been outstanding for Philadelphia this season. Javon Hargrave has been really good, and they're able to get home. Eagles did not sack Brady in that Week 6 matchup. They get one here to force his field goal try of 34 by Suckup. Snap a little high, kick is perfect. And a good start for Tampa Bay. Nice job by Philadelphia's defense to keep them out of the end zone, but Tom Brady's team up 17. That just ask Siri, who leads the league in passing touchdowns? Well, the Saturday wildcard games, the Bengals defeat the Raiders by seven. First playoff win in 31 years for Cincinnati. Burrow had a nice game. 241 yards and two touchdowns, and the Bills just took apart the Patriots 47 to 17. Josh Allen, five touchdowns, 308 yards. Bills scoring touchdowns on their first seven possessions. That was pretty much a clinic, no matter how you look at it last night. Congratulations to Buffalo and Josh Allen moving on. First time in NFL history, regular or post, you go an entire game. Without throwing a pick, trying to punt, trying to field goal. Although they had some issues with the extra point tries. That was about it. And not much of a return. Just 16 yards by Gainwell here. And here comes Jalen Hurts down 17 points here early on the road. Yeah, right now just not a lot going well for Philadelphia. They're starting this ball backed up inside the 20-yard line and, and it is time now for Jalen Hurts in this offense to get something going they, they just the, the defense has been on the field a lot Tampa's been playing this hurry up offense a little bit and they're gassed player down for Philadelphia that's Patrick Johnson so we'll take a break before the possession begins for the Eagles are you kidding me Well, moments ago during the break, T.J. Edwards went off to get looked at. Really done a nice job since taking over for Eric Wilson, a middle linebacker. Meanwhile, for the Eagles offense, Goddard and Devontae Smith have been targeted a combined one time. That's got to change, you have to believe. Here's Hertz. Pulls it out of there and gets the edge on the right side. Out of bounds with about 10. Well, that's a start. You know, the fact that they were able to get positive yards on this play with Hurts is saying something because Whitehead just takes a bad angle here, and then he gets blown up. But Tampa Bay defensively, they are loading up, as you would expect, against the run. They know what Philadelphia wants to do, and so now you're going to get those one-on-one -on -one opportunities on early downs. You got it right here with Devontae Smith. He's your best wide receiver. Come out and throw him the ball. You've got a soft corner and Jamel Dean across from him. Instead, they find Quez Watkins. And he's forced out right at the line of scrimmage by Jamel Dean, who well, came up to make the play. Boy, he sure did. Jamel Dean, he got Devontae Smith, who's trying to block him. 
there on the outside. Jamel Dean just goes right through him. You can see they had something if Devontae's able to make that block. He's not able to, and they don't get anything. First completion to a tight end or wide receiver, and it goes for zero yards. Second and ten. They still have one-on-one -on -one here. Pass is caught by Gainwell. Not much. Made the most of it. Got out to the 31, a gain of three, and Carlton Davis made the stop. Yeah, and that's what I think is going to have to change. I don't think you change who you are. And at 17 points down, you know, middle of the second quarter, there's still plenty of time. But when you're getting one-on-one -on -one with Devontae Smith, and you're throwing wide receiver screens and quick passing game at the line of scrimmage, that is not going to get it done against Tampa Bay. Third down and seven. Hurts steps into it. Pass is caught. And a first down out to the 48 by Goddard. Where they needed that. 16-yard completion from Jalen Hurts. Yeah, and this offensive line does an excellent job. Tampa Bay brings some people on the rush, but Goddard is able to find the hole, and he gets in the middle of it. You see the look here that they bring five rushers, and they pick it up really well. A big third down conversion for Philadelphia. Yeah, they're first to the game. Here's Hurts keeping and getting a block. It's Goddard out there with the block, and Hurts carried for six. Pretty good design with Goddard leading the way. Now Philadelphia finally starting to get something going offensively. They're changing up the tempo a little bit as well. Second down and four. Hurts keeps and nearly picked. Levante David almost came up with it. Antoine Winfield had pressure, and I'm not sure who that pass was to. Well, Winfield comes off the edge, and he's throwing it to Goddard there. And when the ball is thrown, when Hertz feels Winfield come off the slot, he knows he's got to get the ball out. Just no one was ready. Third down and four. Good protection. Pass downfield too far, incomplete. Goddard was down there for Philadelphia, and for the first time, the Eagles cross midfield. The drive is stalled for the moment, and it looks like they're going to go for it here on fourth down. Yeah, I think this is the, the right call based on where they're at on the field. They made one stop when they gave the ball to Brady with great field position. You know, maybe they could do it again if they don't make it. But right now, they, they know they need points, and they're in that area where, you know, how much do you really benefit by a punt if it goes in the end zone? Buccaneers take a timeout before this fourth and four, and we're back after this from Verizon. Verizon is going ultra, and so is our best unlimited plan ever. Mary, welcome to Verizon's new plan with 5G Ultra Wideband now in many more cities. Cool. Up to 10 times the speed at zero extra cost. Our 5G data is for reals unlimited, no matter how much you use. Did you just say for reals? Sorry. Let's put it to work with six premium entertainment subscriptions included. Shh, I'm in the lead. Go on, watch all you want. I love this show. And because a better plan deserves a better phone, how about a new one on us? Seriously? Yep, it's our best plan ever. Verizon is going ultra, so you can too. And we got fourth down and four now on that third and four play. Todd Bowles in this defense, they play coverage. Let's see what he decides to do here. <laughs> Hertz throws and the pass complete for the first down to Goddard. Levante David in coverage in 10 yards on fourth and four. They play man underneath with a two deep shell behind it and a, just a really good route by Goddard to be able to beat that coverage. It's, it's not easy to do. 
You got a lot of you got heavy leverage from Levante David, and yet he's able to win. Blitz off the edge. Hurts throws, and the pass is through the hands and incomplete as Goddard could not haul it in. Well, Jalen Hurts, I mean, Tampa Bay, here comes Antoine Winfield again. Jordan Howard does an excellent job of seeing it and getting over and taking a hit off the quarterback. They have this. If, if he's able to make this catch, I mean, there was just nobody there. I mean, this is a huge gain, and that's one you got to make. I think he agrees. Yeah, well, yeah, <laughs> for sure. Those are those are the plays in every game, but especially in a postseason game that those make the difference. Handoff is to Sanders. Nothing there. And a loss of one on the play as Steve McClendon got penetration and then teammates came up to help. Well, his Tampa defense. I know in talking with Todd Bowles, I asked him, how concerned are you about your run defense going in against this offense and the way that they've run the football over the second half of the season? He said, I'm not concerned. I think we're going to hold up just fine, and they have. Dallas Goddard, four targets on this possession. Devontae Smith, no targets in the game. He's one-on-one -on -one again down here at the bottom. Crossing right in front of Hertz. Doesn't go that way. Instead, Sanders, and he gets brought down by Devin White and Antoine Winfield. I just, I just sometimes think teams overthink it. Look how soft Jamel Dean is here in coverage. You take your best receiver, run him on a 15-yard curl route, and you'll complete that all day long because of the speed that Smith has and the threat that he has to get by you. And I think sometimes coaches overthink it with scheme and they try to do a little bit too much. But right now, the way Tampa Bay's playing them, it shouldn't be that hard to get the ball into Smith's hand. It's fourth down and 10. They pass on a 55-yard field goal try. Hurts is nearly picked, doesn't matter. Carlton Davis made the play. Rager was the target. Still no looks for Devontae Smith, and now flags come in at the very well after the play. As Carlton Davis took his helmet off. The Bucks will get the ball here. It's a dead ball foul. But that's what the flag's for, for Carlton Davis taking his helmet after the off. Play, after the ball was turned over on downs to Tampa Bay, unsportsmanlike conduct, number 24, Tampa Bay, for taking his helmet off. That's a 15-yard penalty. Tampa Bay will keep the ball first down. So it backs Timeout. up the Bucks, but they get the stop on fourth down and 10. Todd Bowles, Carlton Davis come together after that call. Buccaneers get the ball up 17. What's that feature? I don't have that on my phone, do you? And <laughs> I don't. I get it, though. Yeah, <laughs> there's an app for that. <laughs> First That's down from the 22. Aaron Andrews will know. No, there's no doubt. Handoff here to Keyshawn Vaughn, and Vaughn is stood up, loss of one. Tristan Wirfs back in the game, so he's back, Joe, but he is really limping out there. He's not moving particularly well. It's that right ankle that was injured early. He's back in. Ryan Jensen barely missed anything, didn't miss any offensive snaps. Brady's completing passes at 78%. His season high, 81%. That was at Philadelphia week six. He completes here, but for not much, just four. As Keyshawn Vaughn is knocked down by Alex Singleton, and let's watch Worfs. Yeah, he's, he's moving pretty gingerly out there and sounded like in visiting with Aaron Andrews that he more or less talked himself into 
back into the lineup. And if if this doesn't get better in a hurry, I don't know how much more we'll see of him. He's too valuable of a player. The fact that he's able to, that he thinks he can go back in and play, which he has, is a really positive sign. We all know what happened to Kansas City a year ago when they had those injuries up front. They're down in seven and a sack for this Eagles defense back at the 15. Kerrigan and Barnett. And Wirfs is slow to get up again. They got the inside pressure. Here, here's Kerrigan on the outside, and, and you got Cox in the middle. There, there just really was nowhere for Brady to go. And now you've got here. Here's Wirfs. I think that'll probably be about it. If you're Tampa Bay, you're obviously playing the long game in this postseason, and they'll need him. Meanwhile, for Jonathan Gannon, his crew's going to come up with a couple of sacks here. Yeah, just it, this four-man pass rush that Philadelphia has is, is, is really stout, uh, one of the best, and it's a big reason why they don't blitz more than they do. They don't have to. Two straight third down sacks for the Eagles defense. Fourth down and 16 and a punt from Pinion. <laughs> Knuckling kick that is fielded by Rager after a couple of bounces and he's out of bounds just shy of the 40 and we'll find out what's coming our way at halftime. Okay, Kurt, ready, action. Coming up on the Verizon Halftime Show, we'll break down the first half between the Bucks and Eagles, all the big plays there. Plus, we'll get you set for the second half. It's all coming your way on the Verizon Halftime. Hey, I think you nailed that one, TB. High five. Hey, the drone, wait. <laughs> Just not a good combination with Terry with the mask on flying the drone. <laughs> Best starting field position for the Eagles down 17 under two and a half to go two timeouts chance to score and they get the kick to start the second half Hertz has got to find Smith at some point here Goddard a lot of room to run takes it inside Tampa territory and still going flag on the play and out of bounds at the 30 is Goddard. Mike Edwards missed a tackle along the way, but we'll see who's guilty of the foul. Holding offense, number 62. Ten-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Replay, first down. Number 62, Jason Kelsey. Uh, I think Whitehead was he was going to the ground, and it looked it looked like Kelsey may have grabbed him. I, I don't believe that he did. Mike, what do you think? Well, it's one of those where it sets up where it looks like a hole, but he doesn't really get a grab there. But from this perspective of the officials, it looked more, I think, of a hole than it really was. Yeah, that's a, that's a, a, a big penalty. I mean, a nice gain on that play. They were going to have Tampa on the ropes a little bit, cross the 50-yard line, and wow. That would have been about a 30-yard pickup. Instead, the hold on Kelsey, and we're at the two-minute warning in Tampa. We're getting destroyed out there. We need a plan. I have a plan. Well, two minutes left in this first half here in Tampa. A big holding call on Jason Kelsey a moment ago, and it's first and 10 with the ball back at the 39-yard line of the Eagles. Philly wide receivers, three targets, one catch, no yards, and Devontae Smith not targeted. Hard to believe. At the top of the screen, and there we go. Makes his first catch, shows off the speed, flag flies as Smith gets nine. Well, that looks like it's probably coming back based on where the flag is. It's Craig Rolstead and his crew talk it through. 
Pass interference, offense, number 16. That's a 10 yard penalty, replay, first down. Quez Watkins guilty of blocking downfield before the ball was touched out there on the edge by Smith. Uh, here's Quez Watkins right here in the slot. And he gets beyond a yard. Then Nick Sirianni obviously not pleased. And now the ball's back at the 29. First and 20. Two big plays erased by penalties. Hurts throws and incomplete. Kind of up for grabs as Goddard was in between two defenders, Whitehead and Dean, and Goddard just able to avoid a pick. Well, I don't like the spacing on this route at all. And you've got defenders, you've got two receivers right there basically within seven yards of each other, and it just does not clean things up then for Jalen Hurts as he's looking out there trying to figure out where he's going to throw the football. You see that the one who's covering the inside receiver, he's able to come off of him and help make a play on the ball. 15 pass attempts for Hurts. Eight have gone the direction of Goddard. He has three catches. Hurts keeps, gets a block on the edge. Breaks one tackle and is knocked out at the 39. And no penalty flag flies for that almost late hit. Gain of nine. No, they, they couldn't. The official was on his backside. He could, couldn't get to the flag. <laughs> Brings up third down and 11. Yeah, I mean, this run, it's a, it's a nice play that at least they, they make it a somewhat reasonable third down attempt from where it had been. Eagles need one here. Pass is floated for Watkins, and they get it. Quez Watkins down to the 27 with a minute and a half left in the half. Well, four-man rush. They're able to get Quez Watkins down the field, and he turns Whitehead around. And by Hurts stepping up and giving himself a little bit more time, he's able to give him a chance on this ball. Really nice job and a big play when they needed it 35 yards by far their biggest of the day pass is high but caught by Smith and the clock will continue to run with just over a minute to go again of six wow that's impressive with those two penalties they're backed up and first and forever and to be able to overcome that and keep this drive and now they're in scoring position that's that's really good work Hurts, end zone, picked off. Intercepted by Mike Edwards. Well, Jamel Dean out here, he falls down. And so Smith gets past him, but Edwards is gonna keep working across. You can see, once Jalen Hurts sees it, he's trying to line drive it and get it to him as quickly as possible. But Edwards, he's working that way, and, and Hurts never picks him up as the guy who can then take that throw. And Edwards comes up with another big play. He's had those timely interceptions throughout the season. Had a couple of them return for touchdowns. And he just snuffs out this scoring opportunity for Philadelphia. Mike Edwards, who had the two pick sixes in the week two victory over Atlanta, secures the interception, gets the touchback, and the ball sits at the 20. Buccaneers have it up 17 points and hand it off to Bernard. He gets five, maybe five and a half before Derek Barnett makes the stop. And timeout taken by Tampa Bay. On the Thursday night before Super Bowl 56, the NFL's brightest stars will be recognized for the best plays and moments from the 2021 season. Tune in to NFL Honors on Thursday, February 10th at 9 Eastern. 
on ABC, ESPN Plus, and NFL Network. Well, they ran the ball there on first down. Tom was looking to the sidelines to, to see if they wanted to go into a hurry up. They had two timeouts. Had they decided to do that instead, they used a timeout. And I'm not I'm not real sure. They'll see maybe if they can get a chunk play. Give themselves a chance to maybe come away with something here before the half. Tristan Wirfs is out at right tackle. Wells back in there. Here's Gronkowski. And he's able to get out of bounds with a gain of just three. Third down coming up. So Wirfs will watch the rest of this one with us. Yeah, and Josh Wells, when he's come in, you know, they have none of the guys outside of their starting five have, have played a lot. Wells was primarily their sixth offensive lineman throughout the season. And he goes back into the lineup. Uh, he's held up at least decent to where no point in trying to get worse back out there. Brady is sacked again. And it's Kerrigan again. Well, maybe they need worse after all, because that's Josh Wells out there at right tackle, and Kerrigan goes right through him. It just Brady has, has, has no chance. That is three straight third down sacks for this Philadelphia defense. And now Wells limps off after getting handled by Ryan Kerrigan. And with 27 seconds remaining, timeout taken by Philly. Jalen Rager waits for the punt. Pinion gets it away. Sends Rager back, and this will end up all the way down inside the 20. And that takes any drama you would have to believe out of the rest of this first half. As we'll welcome you back inside this broadcast booth, Joe Buck with Troy Aikman. And for Philadelphia defensively, they've found some answers here after falling into that 17 to nothing hole. Yeah, the four-man rush has done a pretty good job for Philadelphia, so they've been able to get a little bit of pressure on Brady and tighten some things up. I mean, they were giving up some plays there in the first few possessions of the game, and, and even for Philadelphia offensively, they finally have gotten a few things going and just haven't been able to quite capitalize on it, but I'd like to think that they'll go in here at halftime and start figuring out some better ways to get the ball into some of the playmakers' hands. It was a 61-yard punt by Bradley Pinion, and with only one timeout and 15 seconds left, they throw a safe throw to Gainwell, who's wrapped up immediately by Jamel Dean. And that will be that for one half of this wild card playoff game. 17 to nothing. Buccaneers at the half. Eagles get the ball to start the second half. Stay tuned. Verizon halftime coming up after this from your local Fox station. I can see your voice. You could win one. Any other use of this broadcast or any pictures, descriptions, or accounts of the game without the consent of NFL Productions is prohibited. And he is in for the touchdown. The good execution on this drive by Tampa. Today's game flow brought to you by Progressive. One half in the books. Wild card weekend continues. 17 zip. Tampa Bay on top. Joe Buck and Troy Aikman with you with Tom and Aaron down on the field. And Let's talk about Philadelphia and what they have to do here. They get the ball to start the second half, and we saw some signs, glimpses, but they got to get it into the end zone. Well, let's first acknowledge that this is a game we've seen before between these two teams. Philadelphia got behind week six. They were able to make a game of it there in the fourth quarter. Will they be able to do that today? I think one of the things that they need to do, even though Tampa has been loading up the box, is they've got to get the ball into the hands of Miles Sanders more. I mean, they have definitely gone to throwing the football in that first half, and I understand part of that because of the way Tampa has played them. 
But Devontae Smith is getting a lot of one-on-one coverage. And, Joe, I can tell you, if teams played Michael Irvin that way back in the day, he would have had 10 catches in that first half. And I just think that they have everything that they would hope to have against Devontae Smith, and now it's just a matter of getting him the football. And a lot of times you hear an analyst say that, okay, well, how do you get him the football? You can run any route you want out there if you're one-on-one, and yet the Eagles haven't really tried any of it. Instead, it's just been a lot of scheme that hasn't uh, produced a whole lot of yards. Pinion will kick it away with the rookie Gainwell waiting for it. And Gainwell stays away out of the back of the end zone, and we send it down to Tom Rinaldi. Well, Joe, talking to Nick Sirianni coming out at half about Jalen Hurts in his playoff debut, he said he made some mistakes in that first half, but we all made mistakes. He was very even killed, the same guy in the locker room. He said as if listening directly to what Troy just said, we have to find ways to get Devontae Smith more involved in this offense. We found some rhythm and made mistakes. Defensively, he said with Worfs out, we found a way to take advantage of that, and we have to continue to do that to put pressure on Tom Brady but certainly Troy it's as if he heard you we'll see now if they're able to do that and get Smith more involved from the 25 this possession begins with the Eagles down 17 they start with a run by Sanders and he gets two down to Aaron Andrews and we're going to start with the Bucks offense Bruce Arians telling me that tackle Tristan Werf has officially been ruled out. Now, Josh Wells, who came in for him, has also been battling an injury. Bruce Arians telling me he's just going to have to go. He's going to have to try out there. I asked him what they're going to do if Wells can't go. He said we're going to have to put another tackle or guard, kind of see what we're going to do here. Asked him about also these sacks on third down, and he said we're going to have to get help Tom out here, get it out of his hands quicker. He said it's going to be all about who can we mix and match here in this puzzle we call our offense. Second down and eight as Hertz steps through. Flag on the play, and Hertz has a first down for now. But the Buccaneers believe this one's coming back for a hold, and it will. Holding offense, number 62. The 10 yard penalty replay. Second down. Right in the middle. Jason Kelsey, Vita Vea, number 50. He's lined up right over him, and, and that's who Kelsey holds. You see the right hand yanking him to the ground. And Vita Vea, man, what an athlete this guy is at 350 pounds. He just signed a contract extension. Good for him, well-deserved. I mean, he's the guy who, who, in a lot of ways, really makes it happen. When you get a, an athlete that big that can penetrate in the middle, it makes it a lot easier for all of your edge rushers as well. Hurts to Gainwell. Gainwell with blocking on a screen is out across the 25. Meanwhile, Jason Kelsey, now the four-time All-Pro, committed just one penalty all year. And it was an unsportsmanlike conduct call. He's been called for two holds in this game today third down and eight for kelsey's crew on offense well this offense in the first half not real good on third downs just two for seven the second half of the season they were they were best in the nfl on third down close to 50 percent is what they were converting and that's why they were able to run the football more and stick with that game plan hurts out to his left He's got a man for the first down. That is Goddard. They didn't blow it dead until after he popped up and took it down to the 45, 28 yards. Well, and that's just Goddard. Once Hertz is able to get out of the pocket and keep the play alive, takes a big hit at the end of it, but Goddard just finds a hole and works back to the quarterback. A great job by Goddard of giving his quarterback a place to go with the football. Big completion of 28 yards. And now Hurts going for another big one. Too high and nearly picked. Watkins was the target in and out of the hands of Carlton Davis. That was a good read by Hurts. I don't think Watkins ever thought the ball was going to come his way. It's almost like he's not running full speed off the line of scrimmage. And he's trying to get into the middle. You're going to see the safety rotated to the left. 
and he shuts it down right there. And you can't, you just can't do that to your quarterback. Hurts doesn't know that he's throttling it down. He's trying, expecting him to go. Ball gets away from him a little bit, but just not on the same page at all. Opportunity missed there. Now second and ten from the 45. Pass is high again with Goddard the target and Jordan Whitehead there. Well, Tampa Bay, they, they're a pretty quick study. The guy he's been throwing the football to is Dallas Goddard, and so they've got two guys on him. But even with that said, Goddard, Goddard runs a good route, and the, the protection in the pocket looked good enough. I mean, you see that he's got he's open. Hertz has just been a, he's just been a touch late, just a touch late. On, on turning a lot of throws loose. Targeted Goddard 10 times. Dallas four catches, 64 yards. They're going to have to set now. They had two guys moving at once. They just get it away. Hurts throws and incomplete for Devontae Smith. That brings up fourth down, and the punt team comes on for Philadelphia. That's the route that they've had. They're playing inside out on Devontae Smith with the corner and safety. But those, those throws, those should be pretty simple completions. They just haven't been. Sipas, end over end punt. And a fair catch hauled in by Jalen Durden. They had that big completion on third down to Goddard, but more frustration for this Eagles offense. Still shut out, down 17. Insurance. Save when you bundle auto, home, or motorcycle insurance. Well, some frustration to be sure for the Eagles and their wide receiver core for Devontae Smith. Three targets, one catch. Guy who set the Eagles rookie record with his 916 receiving yards. His fourth among rookies this year. Heisman Trophy Award winner in 2020. And not much of a factor as a handoff is to Keyshawn Vaughn. And he's out across the 15 to the 16, a gain of seven. Well, we heard Aaron Andrews talk about you know, now that we've got Josh Wells in for Tristan Wirfs and, and he's banged up and how long will he be able to go? And I can only imagine that Byron Leftwich and Bruce Arians are thinking, hey, if we can run the ball and minimize the hits on Brady and get out of this game and, and hopefully get those guys healed up, that's the route to go. That was a good start on first down. Good penetration here by the Eagles and Vaughn is wrapped up in the backfield. A loss of two on the play. Milton Williams got through. And then he drew a crowd of green jerseys. Third down coming up. His defensive front overall just really doing a good job. You see the job by Milton Williams. He's able to get there initially. And then others are playing downhill football. And what was second and three is now third and five. Brady protected pass is broken up. Out on the edge for Perryman. Steven Nelson defending and a good job by the Eagles defense. Three and out. It's really good because Steven Nelson, he prefers to play off coverage, but he comes up, he plays good tight coverage there on Perryman and makes a play on third down. So they already had Tampa Bay backed up and now Philadelphia is going to get Really good field position to start this drive. That's the third straight three and out forced in the fourth overall by Philadelphia's defense. Short punt. Hangs up high and it's muffed. Rager could not haul it in. Bucks think they have it. And they do. Well, 
Well, the wind is swirling up top, and you just have to believe that it impacted this because Rager just, he's not able to get in position to be able to make a play on this punt return. Ross Cockrell comes away with it for the Buccaneers, who have it inside Eagles territory up 17. Do it TurboTax Live. You do your thing. We've got your taxes. Well, Jalen Rager coughs it up, muffs the punt. 21st pick in the 2020 NFL Draft. The fourth wide receiver selected and taken one pick before Justin Jefferson. We need team. We need team. Alert. 22. We need team. Second turnover of the ball game by the Eagles. None for Tampa Bay. And here's a screen for Bernard down just shy of the 25. That's a good job by this offensive line off the hard play action fake. Sets up the screen pass. You see the convoy that Bernard has out in front of him. Just a great execution. It's all about timing when you're running these screen plays. And they do an outstanding job. The 22 yards, the Bucks' longest play all game. And it comes on a screen. Timeout taken before the play clock expired. Let's go back and look at what happened with Jalen Rager on the punt return. It looks for a moment, Troy, like he's going to call for a fair catch, and then he just never really got there. Yeah, I just think the, the wind that's swirling up there, and here's Scotty Miller who's able to get down the field and then be there when the ball gets muffed, and... Bruce Arians comes in. He's pretty excited. He takes a whack at Adams. <laughs> I don't know if he's not exactly sure what that's about. Bruce Arians not moving particularly well over there either. But, yeah, a lot of wind up there, Joe, and I, and I just think that Rager just was affected by it, trying to get underneath it and not able to get in a position to make the proper catch. Here is a handoff to Bernard. He gets two. February 6th, the storied venue that's seen everything, has never seen anything like this. NASCAR comes to the L.A. Coliseum for the very first Bush Light Clash at the Coliseum. Sunday, February 6th, only on Fox. The day will also be highlighted by musical performances by Pitbull and in news that was broken by Kurt Menefee today on Fox NFL Sunday. Ice Cube, quite an event coming up February 6th on Fox. Gronkowski circled on second and eight. That is caught by Brait. Cameron Brait gets five. And into the red zone they go, and they fire the cannons. And now third and three. Yeah, Tampa Bay, when they lost Chris Godwin uh, three or four weeks ago, they, they started using more of the two tight end packages. It, it helped. We all know that Rob Gronkowski missed some times when he had the, the broken ribs, missed some games. And so they've, they've utilized that two tight end personnel. Brait had a nice year last year. Really good player. Is able to do some things. Such a great compliment to Rob Gronkowski opposite of him. Brady Evans inside the five. First and goal. They put Evans in the slot, and that's when he draws Avante Maddox. We saw it earlier in this game. He runs a nice route. Ball just a, a little bit low. But if he's able to catch this, actually, pretty good throw, actually. If he, he's, he's typically able to catch that, he probably gets right into the end zone for a touchdown. These two teams met week six. Mike Evans had four targets, two catches. He's got seven catches in this game for 78 yards. Brady keeps, end zone wide open, touchdown Gronkowski. And for big number 87, his 15th career postseason touchdown catch. Number two all-time and most ever 
by a tight end. Yeah, Philadelphia, just everybody is looking in the backfield, and Gronkowski, he just comes right off the ball. Nobody is concerned about him at all. He, he's had a lot of touchdown receptions. He won't have any any easier. A lot of touchdown receptions. He's had 107 touchdown receptions. Third most all-time by a tight end, and the most ever by a tight end in the postseason. 24-0, Tampa Bay. Today's game is sponsored by GMC. We are professional grade. People of a certain age are taken right back to their youth with the show, The Courtship of Eddie's Father, with that music. And there's the easy one. 105 of Gronkowski's 107 touchdown catches have come out of the right hand of number 12. Well, you think back to that last possession here, it looked like Philadelphia was going to get great field position and maybe claw their way back into this. And... Instead, they find themselves now down 24. The result of the muffed punt by Rager. Buccaneers turned it into seven. Well, so much for running the football with Miles Sanders and all the things that Philadelphia has been able to do to get themselves into this postseason over the second half of the year. They got to start throwing the football and It'd help if they started getting the ball to Devontae Smith. And this is not the position they want to be in. Obviously, down on the scoreboard, but in a position where they just have to try to get big chunks. That has not been what has led them to success this year. That has, with carries by Sanders, who had back-to-back 100-yard games before breaking his hand week 16 against the Giants. Good for 15 here. Well, if they can do that, if they can get 15-yard chunks, then, <laughs> hey, keep feeding it to them. He might get more carries here in the second half than he had in the first half. He just, he just had four when it was still a game. Here's Rager. Nothing. Gets hit hard by Carlton Davis, a gain of just two. Well, Tampa Bay still playing single high safety. They got a middle or a safety in the middle of the field. They're one on one on the outside, and for the life of me, I just can't understand why they don't throw the ball to these outside receivers on some deeper routes instead of all this quick passing game. See the cushion right here. There you go. Sanders hops out of bounds with a nice pickup on second and eight. He gets five and brings up a third and short. Even with that, Joe, as, much, as soft as they are, I mean, five yards is nice, but when, if you could get 15 or 20, wouldn't you rather get that? Well, yeah, absolutely. I Come thought, on. I thought you'd agree. Yes, I'll trade my five <laughs> yards for your 15 or 20 every day. You did good in math, didn't you? <laughs> I done good. <laughs> Third down and three. Come Tiger, come Tiger! Good protection, pass behind the target. That's Watkins. And it brings up fourth down. And the Eagles will be compelled to go for it on fourth and three. Well, here's Watkins, and he runs a dig route, and a pretty good route. Should be an easy completion, but you're going to see Jalen Smith in the, or Jalen Hurts in the pocket, and how he just hesitates. And there's two bounces, three bounces. He wants to see it. Now you throw it, and it's behind. And you're just not going to be efficient as a passing offense if you don't if you don't anticipate and have better timing than that. Extra men on the rush. Eagles pick it up. Hurts throws, and it's picked. And 
Intercepted by Shaq Barrett. And he's rumbling all the way to the 36-yard line. An interception in the third turnover by the Eagles in this game. Barrett up, tipped it to himself. His second interception of the season, and it's all Tampa Bay here today. Well, Shaquille Barrett gets the interception. And compliments of that, and before that, the muff punt. Second straight time, the Bucks have started inside Eagles territory. Brady, Evans is in for the touchdown with a flare. You're going to see this route by Mike Evans. It is so good. He's going to stair-step it on Rodney McLeod. Right there, McLeod was going to drive on it, but Evans stair-steps the route, and so McLeod then thinks, oh, no, he's going vertical, and then he does come across and gives himself that much space and a good target for Brady. This to make it 31 to nothing off the right foot of Ryan Suckup. He's got it. Evans, who set a franchise record with his 14 receiving touchdowns this season, gets it in from 36 yards away. Here's Shaq Barrett right here on the interception that he had just moments ago as Jalen Hurts is trying to buy time and then get the ball into Devontae Smith. Shaq Barrett makes a heck of a play. Going up, tipping it, making the catch, and then run after catch. But that's what set up the touchdown then to Mike Evans. But just... They get the they get the turnover there in midfield and then take the home run shot and they get it to Mike Evans who as we know is Kind of the, the one guy left standing at the wide receiver position What a nice route and a great connection with him and Brady That touchdown pass we'll see if that ends the day for Brady I mean, At some point You're thinking ahead to next week and for Evans He's just been the consummate pro, and he was here through some lean years. He's got the eight straight 1,000-yard seasons to start his career. That's an NFL record that we talked about earlier. He's been the Walter Payton Man of the Year nominee for this Tampa Bay Buccaneers team three years in a row. He's everything you want, and a big target that... If it's not Gronk, he's the favorite for Tom Brady. Yeah, and Bruce Arians has been around a lot of great receivers. He says he's the best he's ever coached. I mean, that's quite a statement. With rain falling, Gainwell on the return. Out near the 28. Well, Bruce Arians, former college quarterback, has been on some kind of journey. 16 jobs over 46 years. Started as a Virginia Tech graduate assistant, running backs coach. He's been with Tampa Bay, the Cardinals, the Colts in the NFL. His last three stops kind of made his name in the NFL with the Steelers. 46 years of coaching and right now dealing with a partial tear in his right Achilles tendon. He's got it iced up. Could you imagine had he never have been given the opportunity to be a head coach? And he had pretty much resigned himself. You see the ice bag right down here at the bottom. He's in quite a bit of pain, just hoping that thing doesn't give all the way out. But you know, he had pretty much resigned himself to the fact that he was never going to get that shot. And he did, and the league's been better for it. Hurts brought down behind the line of scrimmage by Tryon Shoyinka. And Arians proving that the old college quarterback can play hurt <laughs> as Andrew Adams was pulling one of the Eagles out of the pile, which is a foul, by the way, if they want to flag it. And Arians came in and whacked him on the side of the helmet. <laughs> Adams didn't want any part of no, it either. Back right off. <laughs> Sorry. Second and 13. 
backing up and throwing to avoid the sack is Hurts with pressure by Anthony Nelson to bring up third and 13. Oh, yeah, free rusher right off the edge. And whether that was a mistake up front or if Hurts has to see that, it certainly looked like my lotta probably should have been able to pick that up. But they got everything working against them right now. This is, I mean, down 31 points for a team that runs the ball 50% of the time. It's not a good formula. Third down and 13. Drops it off to Howard. Won't get it, won't come close. Tell you, when you talk about the history of Bruce Arians, you got to factor in Todd Bowles, who played for Arians at Temple. Such a smart defensive player, was undrafted, and in his second year in the NFL was calling the really intricate and tough defense for a championship team in 1987 with Richie Pettibone and the Washington team. I sure hope he gets another shot at a head coach. I know he's going to be interviewing. Maybe he has. Can't keep up with all that, but I sure hope he gets another shot. Such a talented defensive mind and good, solid person. It's a bigger reason why they won it all as anybody last year. The league's 88 best players are set to face off on the Pro Bowl field in Las Vegas. Catch the 2022 Pro Bowl presented by Verizon on Sunday, February 6th at 3 Eastern. Buy your tickets today at ProBowl.com or watch the excitement on ABC, ESPN, and ESPN Deportes. Well, you see Tom Brady, he's back out onto the field. And, and my guess is that Arians is thinking he wants to get this game into the fourth quarter. And then once that happens... If this possession runs into the fourth quarter, I would think he'd be done. Wouldn't come back out. In fact, I would I would have to believe that this will be his last possession of the game. Blaine Gabbard was just warming up a moment ago, but Brady stays in for the moment. Last two throws have gone for touchdowns. Hands off to Bernard. Bounces it out to the right. And out of bounds, taken there by Alex Singleton, a gain of eight. This Tampa team, when you start looking at their season and how it all went and the players that are down now that aren't coming back, Godwin, and, of course, they released Antonio Brown, but he certainly had a role, and then all the defensive players. And it's been a, you know, you think about a team that won 13 games. It, it's been a struggle. And it's been nothing easy. For them, it's about been the easiest day they've had. Hand off for the first down, Bernard. With three to go in the third quarter in a 31 to nothing game. A gain of seven. Well, what Tom Brady has done, and well, they're on offense here, and what is a blowout at the moment, you start looking at some of the numbers that he's been able to compile and what he's done consecutive 40 touchdown seasons at ages 43 and 44 well he threw 50 in 2013 i believe it was in the uh, 43 and 40 over the last two years are his second and third most in a season so, wrapped up by singleton behind the line of scrimmage is bernard and a loss on the play of three i mean it's pretty crazy that at 44 years old you can make an argument that this is as good a year as as he's had and I know if, if it were me, I, I wouldn't imagine you'd want to stop playing if you're playing at that level. And I know he loves the game, loves playing with these guys, loves competing with his teammates. This one is <laughs> bounced into Darden. We'll give you a comparison. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers, born in 1976. Tom Brady, born in 1977. In the 80s, the early years, John McKay, the head coach. Brady growing up in Northern California as a 49ers fan. 02, Brady wins his first Super Bowl. 03, Bucks win their first Super Bowl. And then last season, Brady wins Super Bowl 55 with the Buccaneers over the Chiefs 31-9. By the way, I was off. 
six years when he threw 50 touchdowns. It was 2007. I knew it was a while ago. I didn't know it was that long ago. <laughs> Snap infraction. Offense number 66. Five yard penalty. Still third down. The old snap infraction. Buccaneers closing in on their 11th postseason win as a franchise. Five will be engineered by Tom Brady in two seasons. With a game to go, it would appear next week. Bernard on third and 18. Does Barnett get credit for part of that tackle at the end of that? Just picking up his foot and saying, here. Yeah, why not? Sure. Brings up fourth down. You know, Brady is still, he's, he's laughing now. And initially he was coming off the field and, and went to the officials. And he was a little frustrated with something. Now he runs hot on yes, game he does. day. He sure does. And he told the bench and the coaching staff that he was going back in to help Gronk bag a million dollars worth of incentives last week in the win over Carolina. Here's Rager. Catches this one. But he is dumped immediately by D. Delaney with a minute three left in the third quarter. And all three phases are humming in this game for the Bucs. Yeah, they really are. The, the, the Eagles... They've just been outplayed, you know, in every phase. And special teams in a game like this is the area you've got to be able to win. And they just haven't gotten, you know, we've seen them take the ball out of the end zone. They haven't gotten it even back to the 20-yard line. And the Rager dropping that punt. No return there. A lot of talent and a lot of experience with the home team in this matchup. Jalen Hurts, the youngest quarterback to start a playoff game for Philadelphia. Sanders, what a job to break that initial tackle, and then that play just washed out as Mike Edwards makes the tackle. And you see the frustration from Miles Sanders. Loss of three. Boy, Winfield, these yeah. safeties have been outstanding today. That was a little... That looked, looked off there in the backfield with the exchange as though... I don't know. So he had four carries in the first half. He's got three here in the second. We'll start throwing that ball is my suggestion. It's your diagnosis. That's my suggestion. <laughs> Bucks have six tackles for a loss, four by their secondary in this game. Here you go. Downfield. Watkins is overthrown. And with 11 seconds left in the quarter, it'll be third and 13. I could only imagine if, if Hertz had hit that to Watkins, what Todd Bowles would have been saying over on that sidelines. That's Edwards who he gets in behind. And in a 31-0 game, that's the last thing that you can do. And I know that Bowles would, he would not have been pleased about that. Hertz gets hit, ball up for grabs, and it's incomplete. Devin White got through. And delivered the hit and brings up fourth down, and the punt team comes on for Philly. Well, Philadelphia is going to have a lot to look at in the offseason in the areas that they, they need to be better. Devin White, who is outstanding when he rushes which he does plenty and they had a spy on him as well and they came after him and everybody rushing the quarterback loves these times in the game five tackles three hits on the quarterback for Devin White Darden on the return Jalen to the 38 and that'll do it for the first three quarters 
First home playoff game other than the Super Bowl for the crowd here in Tampa, Florida for their Bucks in 14 years. It's been worth the wait. It's Fox NFL special back after this from your local Fox station. Kena. Welcome back to Raymond James Stadium here in Tampa, Florida. Aerial coverage is brought to you by Tubi. We're down below. The Bucks got up early. And they've only added to what was a 17 to nothing lead. Early in the ball game, now 31 to nothing as a handoff to Keyshawn Vaughn loses five. Milton Williams got through to make the play. That's a good play by Milton Williams. You mentioned him earlier and the job that he's done. Had a really good season and I know that Jonathan Gannon says that they treat him as though he's a starter and he has really done a nice job today as well. He's one of those young pieces that they can continue to build around. Got a lot of picks in this year's draft coming up as well. Three first round picks. As a carry here by Vaughn is out to the 38, just short of the 39, a gain of six. You know, it's never easy when you are a playoff team and you don't win a playoff game. And then for some teams that have aspirations of the Super Bowl, like Tampa Bay, anything short of that is a huge disappointment. But for a Philadelphia team that was counted out early, they won enough games, got in. I mean, this is pretty deflating. I mean, there's not a lot of things to feel great about, but I do think that this performance and really through the season the way they played against good teams I think the organization understands that they've still got a lot of work to do Brady is sacked again Brought down for the fourth time a loss of four and Alex Singleton will get credit for it Well, we saw Tristan Wirfs talk his way back into the lineup and and I know that Brady doesn't like coming out but I don't know how much of this Bruce Arians is going to have to see before he says you're not going back into the game. Because they have no chance without him. All four sacks by the Eagles on third down. But not forcing it. Brady not throwing a pick. Just take his medicine, take the sack, and watch the punt. And it's a good one by Pinion. Rager all the way back inside the 10. Jalen Rager with a nice return out of bounds near the 35. 60-yard punt, 30-yard return. Eagles back on offense. Down 31. Son? It's time. It's the most reliable 5G network. And by Geico. Switch today and see all the ways you could save. Two-time Super Bowl champion, Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And the defending Super Bowl champion, Buccaneers. Last team to go back-to-back -back in that category, 03-04 Patriots. Here's Devontae Smith. They get it to him on the outside, and he shows what he can do down inside the 35. And they finally get one of those big plays with soft coverage, a gain of 31. Yeah, they got the block on the outside. First of all, Quez Watkins did, and then some poor tackling by Tampa Bay. And three guys who had a shot at him before Jamel Dean's able to come in and wrestle him to the ground. Pistol formation with Boston Scott getting the handoff. And he breaks loose. Scott is gone. Touchdown, Philadelphia. And they're on the board. Thirty-four yard carry by Boston Scott. Eighth rushing touchdown of the season. Just like that, two plays later, they're in the end zone. Jason Kelsey does an excellent job coming around and leading through the hole. Scott get in, gets in behind him. The Eagles are still keeping it on the ground. 
<laughs> 34-yard carry after 31 yards to Devontae Smith. That's been their best place. And it's a 31-7 game with 12.08 to go here in Tampa, Florida. Brady, helmet on, ready to go back to work. Yeah, now he gets to go back in. When you're driving a Lincoln, stress seems to evaporate into... Th Well, Boston Scott gets the first points of the game for the Philadelphia Eagles. Elliott will kick it deep. With the Buccaneers guarding against the potential of an onside kick and Darden from the five. Flag is thrown. Holding during their turn, number 87, 10-yard penalty, first down. Rob Gronkowski was out there, but the hands team was guilty of a hold. Yeah, but I thought right here there would have been a penalty. He's on the ground. That comes in and takes a pretty good hit on him, and I don't, I don't understand. The, the official was right there. He's clearly down, and not to mention, one, he, get, he gets hit, but he gets hit with the crown of his helmet. Wow. I don't know how you miss that, but it puts the ball back at the 10. Arians is livid with good reason. Go, Mike. So Brady continues after the touchdown. And they hand off to Bernard for five. The Buccaneers' journey to repeat. They won their first division title. Since 2007, Tom Brady with the third most passing yards all time, his career high, 53-16. Mike Evans with his eighth straight 1,000-yard receiving season. And Bruce Arians talking about his quarterback. Once he figures out the other team, they're in trouble. He said, I know we've lost guys. They didn't have Fournette today, but with 12 and with their offensive line, he knew they would score points, and they've done just that. Brady with a screen for break. Nobody was out there for Philadelphia. And Cameron Brait picks up 17 yards. Yeah, that was a really good design there offensively. But I will say that you remember back to last year and the growing pains that Tom Brady went through with Arians and Leftwich and the offense and what all they were going to do. And, and then, of course, they put it together and they go on and they win the Super Bowl. And and this year, just much more comfort coming into the season and admiration and, I would say, respect for each other. I know Tom has loved working with Byron Leftwich and feels that he does deserve an opportunity to go on and become a head coach. And, and I know that based on those comments by Arians, how much he respects Tom and what he does for this team. And it, it is true. If he has time, and not to suggest you can just roll anybody out there, but for your head coach to say that, that as long as our offensive line is healthy and I have Tom Brady, we're going to score points. I mean, that's quite a statement. And that's about as, I think that's about as much respect as, as, as we've ever heard Bruce Arians give to anyone. And for any head coach to say that is, is really something special. Second down and seven. Pass is caught by Gronkowski, who's thrown to the ground by Singleton. It's starting to get a little chippy out there. Third down and short coming up. Yeah, I know what, what Arians is trying to do. Run the football and then get the ball out of Brady's hands quickly and just don't let him get hit. And so they're trying to run this ball control passing game right now and then run the ball. They just don't they don't feel comfortable or Brady just doesn't want to come out. But I, I thought that that Brady would have been out before now. There's one way to make sure he doesn't get hit. That's right. And that's to watch Blaine Gabbert play as Brady throws incomplete. Bernard looking for a flag and won't get it against Rodney McLeod. It's fourth down. We mentioned when they went out and they brought in Bernard. Yeah, Brady's talking some more. He just about 
feeling that Bernard, there should have been a penalty on Bernard. On Barnett. Well, I don't think he thought that Barnett should have gotten a penalty there. I think he's frustrated with why Barnett's pushing him in the back. I think he was upset about there not being a pass interference penalty on, on Bernard. But, you know, Tom, Tom does, I think Tom's a great competitor. He's a pretty good talker when he has to be. But he's not afraid to bow up to somebody if he feels like he's being disrespected. Pinion, another good punt. Another muff on the punt by Rager, who has to retreat. And he's wrapped up near the seven. Well, this is the first of three games today, first of two games in the NFC as we welcome you back inside the broadcast booth, Joe and Troy, and that game coming up, which is on CBS, which is the Dallas Cowboys hosting the San Francisco 49ers. We saw San Francisco with that overtime win in L.A. last weekend. That's going to be a good game. It's going to be a great game. Uh, I mean, a really good game. I think there's a lot of people that like to be calling that game. <laughs> But uh, should be a lot of fun, and I think San Francisco is one of those teams that's just really tough. They run the football. They're physical. And a game like that is a, is a team that can go on the road and, and, and win anywhere. I think it's going to be a great matchup. Hand off here to Gainwell. Able to pop free for a couple of extra yards. You're talking about Michaels and Collinsworth. Right when you, oh, I, I think anybody would like to be calling that one, right? Yeah, it's absolutely. Gonna be, it's a great matchup. Two There's storied the, franchises, both teams playing really good football. I think it's going to be a fantastic game. Yeah, plenty of history too. And you've been a big part of that. Yeah. Second down and four. Hurts. Completes, and that's the rookie, Devonte Smith. And I think any Eagles fan is watching this, as we've seen the last couple of possessions with what they've been able to do with Devonte Smith, saying, "Why didn't they go his direction more in the early part of this game?" I think that's one that they're going to have to take a look at and and be critical of themselves as a staff and answer that question. Hurts on first down, hit by Mike Edwards, a gain of five. You know, that previous play with Devontae Smith, we all know the controversy in yesterday's game with the whistle and did it blow or when did it happen. They had Devontae Smith held up for a good couple seconds and they, before, before they blew the whistle on that play. Second and five now. Blitz. Pass caught by Goddard. Off he goes. Dallas Goddard will be sore after this one with as much activity as he has seen. 17 yards for the Eagles. Well, Todd Bowles is, is you know, they've done a lot of good things, but this has got to be pretty maddening for him because the Eagles aren't doing anything. Linda really all that difficult they're throwing the quick passing game running the football and they're not making tackles on the back end aired out Quez Watkins overthrown as he worked against Jamel Dean yeah so Tampa Bay defensively they're gonna have some things to address before their next game too Well, the game tonight is Pittsburgh at Kansas City. If the Chiefs win, they're the number two seed. The top four seeds will be alive in the AFC. Chiefs would host Buffalo. If the Steelers win, they go to top seed at Tennessee. Whoa. On second and ten, pass is caught by Devontae Smith. And he's brought down by Winfield. Gain of four. Super Wild Card Weekend continues later today with the 49ers and Cowboys, followed by the Steelers and the Chiefs. And then tomorrow night, it'll be the Cardinals and the Rams on ESPN. 
in the NFL Divisional Playoffs presented by Intuit TurboTax Live. Kickoff next weekend on CBS, Fox, and NBC. Third down and six. 24-point game. Here is a screen set up and executed by Gainwell. Kind of Gainwell with a catch and run of 20. Yeah, he immediately signals to the sidelines right after this play that he was coming out. He, he taps out. I, I like Gainwell and what he's capable of doing. He's another one of those running backs out of Memphis like Tony Pollard and Antonio Gibson. And, Kind of that scat back type guy that can do some things out of the backfield, catch the football. Hurt steps through trouble. And goes down just short of the 15. Tell you the one thing, Joe, I am looking forward to that, that Rams-Cardinals matchup on Monday night. I, I love that the league did that with the Monday night game. If you're one of those teams, you're probably not as excited. Whoever wins and goes on, you know, having to, the quick turnaround. But... I think probably I can speak for most football fans that extending wild card weekend, that's fun. Should be a good game, too. These two teams split during the regular season with each team winning and the other team's building. Third down and four here. With what happened last weekend and the Rams losing, still winning the division, the Rams slid down the pecking order to the number four seed, and that's why Tampa Bay is the number two seed. Green Bay with the bye week. Set by four. Sitting back, relaxing, getting healthy, getting some bodies back, pointing toward next weekend. On third down, Hurts throws, Gainwell, first down plus, and in for the touchdown. The rookie able to take it in. And two late touchdowns here by Philadelphia. This one 16 yards to Kenneth Gainwell. Well, H, H angle to Gainwell, and there's nobody there in the middle. The middle linebacker, he works to the opposite side. And the Eagles will now go for two and see if they can't cut this to a two-possession game. That is sitting out in front of Philadelphia. A team that was five for six on two-point tries this year. Trying to make it a 16-point game. Hurts. A sprint. And now throws. It is caught by Devontae Smith for the two-point conversion. Unbelievable catch by Devontae Smith. It was such a great catch. I, I kept waiting to see where the ball went. I didn't know if he had it or if it was it was underneath him. But initially, when Hertz runs out to his left, it looked like he was going to be able to run it in himself. But with the angles that Tampa had, he wasn't going to. Devin White closing on him. But that, that catch right there. Oh. That is sensational. Oh, what a great camera shot from that angle. Yeah, really big-time catch. I really like him. I, for a young receiver, I've talked about it before when, he, when we had them earlier in the season. He was so well coached at Alabama. Now, yeah, Hurts gets, gets hit pretty good at the, at the end of that play. He was so well coached at Alabama, and you can tell when you watch him run routes and the way that he's able – to come out of his breaks and at the top of the routes, he lowers his body and his hips, and he's he's terrific. I'm I'm a big fan of this young man's, and I was hoping to see a little more of him in this ball game, but he's got a bright future. There have been nine successful onside kick efforts in the NFL this year. Elliott one for nine. Under five to go. Philadelphia three timeouts. And that was easy. Right to Bernard.
So the Buccaneers will take over and Brady will remain in the game as they're up to the task as that one went on a couple of hops to Giovanni Bernard. Well, it looks like they might be changing out. They've got they've got Aaron Stinney, number 64, who's going into the game now. And if that's if he's the sixth lineman, let's see here what they're doing. But it looks like they're going to go with sixth offensive lineman. So he's just checking in, and they're going to see if maybe they can't run the ball. I thought maybe they were going to pull someone out and see if they couldn't rest. One of these guys up front. Here's Vaughn left side. A gain of two. Clock continues to run. A couple of records for the Buccaneers here today. Brady with his completions and Evans with his nine catches. Single game postseason record for the Tampa Bay Bucks. Evans, nine catches, 117, and a touchdown. The Buccaneers have scored 30 or more points in all five Tom Brady postseason starts. Handoff is to Miller. And Scotty gets the first down and stays inbound. Smart, smart. You know, I don't know if Brady said something to him before they broke the huddle or they talked about it or he just had the awareness but whatever it was that's just that's winning football when you get the ball here and just knowing you know with four minutes to play in the game stay in bounds keep the clock running it's 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 just the little things that make a difference when it's all said and done i think the positive that comes out of this game joe for tampa is first of all ryan jensen coming back in and playing and then Tristan Wirfs, the fact that he tried to go and felt that he could means that it's not quite as significant as what we might have thought when he initially left the game. And you hope that that's the case if you're Tampa Bay. But if they can go back, because it's going to be a, it's going to be a tough road. These games get harder, and, and their, their formula for winning is a little different than what it was a year ago. Vaughn left side, a little bit of a convoy, and he's brought down inbounds, and the Eagles spend their second time out. And I think getting uh, Leonard Fournette, who we thought was going to play this week, getting him, even though I, I thought that Keyshawn Vaughn, you know, he got a fair number of carries in this game. Gio Bernard probably was more effective when he got the ball, but old playoff Lenny, uh, he needs to be a big part of this offense if they're going to do what they're capable of. Here are the guys that are not here. Leonard Fournette, Chris Godwin out with a torn ACL. Antonio Brown cut. And Rojo, as they call him, Ronald Jones out with a bad ankle. A lot of skill. A lot of yards. And I think they've got, you know, Cyril Grayson. He didn't play. Uh, Here's Bernard right side, and he gets brought down by Anthony Harris, a gain of three. I, I think they've got some some players that can do some things. They're not as experienced as some of those guys that, that we just showed, but if they get Fournette back, they get Ronald Jones back, they get Grayson back, they still have some matchup issues that, that, some def that can create some problems for a defense. They're down at four, and Philadelphia now out of timeouts. The next minute and 40, unable to challenge. If something were to come up without any timeouts, third down and four. Pass is bobbled, caught, first down and inbounds. Gio Bernard, a gain of seven. We start looking at the NFC, Green Bay, the top seed, then Tampa Bay, Dallas, and Los Angeles. 
And Philly's eliminated. Still a lot of possibilities out there as to who meets who in the divisional round. If San Francisco wins later today. They would travel to Green Bay. The Dallas Cowboys win that game. Well, they could end up being right here. Yeah, and then last year when they they added the playoff, the extra playoff team, and, and then only the number one seed got the first round by. Of course, Tampa, they went on the road three straight games and won it all, as we know. But they did it. There weren't fans in the stands. There were a little bit in the championship game, but it's a... It, it's a totally different path this year than last year for that just from that standpoint alone that for these road teams it's going to be tough here is bernard left side and again able to sit down and keep the clock running and that'll take us to the two minute warning fire the cannons inside the red zone and before a packed house here in tampa florida the Buccaneers have excited their fans yet again. Trying to go back to back this year. Leading by 16, two minutes left. I like mine with lettuce and tomato. Get the $5 your way meal with the Double Whopper Junior. Two minutes left in this game. Third down and two. Philadelphia out of timeouts. At the end of the season where they went nine and eight the number seven seed in the nfc playoff picture handoff is to bernard and he is just short of first down yardage it'll be fourth down and siriani who is the only first year head coach with a team this year to get his group into the postseason at that reinvention of what they wanted to be offensively in the middle part of the year. They're a young team. They've got three first-round draft picks coming up in the upcoming draft. A lot of reasons to be optimistic with the Eagles. Yeah, I agree. And, and Nick Sirianni did a, did a really great job in so many ways of holding the team together. And like I said early in this game, pivoting offensively. He spent a lot of years with Phillip Rivers, with the Chargers, and also then with the Indianapolis Colts and, and and he knows he knows offensive football he knows what needs to be done and he knows that as good as they they ran the football and that was their formula for getting to the postseason that for them to be the team that they hope to be they've got to be better throwing the football and he was around one of the best in Phillip Rivers for many years and that'll be a point of emphasis I would have to believe with those three draft picks that you talk about in the first round and some of the moves that Howie Roseman and the organization makes going forward. We're down in one here. Toss to Bernard, and the Eagles defense gets a stop with Alex Singleton making the tackle. Philadelphia will take over. The producer of today's game is... Richie Zients, the director, Rich Russo. The associate directors are Jake Jolivet, Rich Gross, Jordan Wolf, Paul Marmoreau. Broadcast associates, Casey Garland, Matt Gale, Grant Lounsbury, and the technical producers, Pete Chalveris, Bob Goosley. The technical director is Colby Bourgeois. The audio mixer is Jamie McCombs. Pre-game show produced by Bill Richards, directed by Stephanie Medina. And our thanks to our crew up here in the booth, Ed Sfida, Bill Garrity, David Moulton. And Steve Horn, our editorial consultant, as the Eagles get it. Down 16 from their own 16. Hurts wide open and the catch, but out of bounds, Quez Watkins. And Todd Bowles is still coaching up those defensive backs yes he is <laughs> we talked about him a little bit earlier some of the opportunities that he's going to have as a as a head coach and I think it's kind of challenging to evaluate anybody when they were the head coach in New York with with all of the struggles that everyone's had when they've coached the Jets 
But, boy, he is really something as a defensive coordinator. And that pairing with him and Bruce Arians, whether it was in Arizona or here, has been quite a combination. Hurts throws, pass caught, Goddard first down, and then Byron Leftwich. You talked about earlier interviewing for opportunities, and you just get the feeling he'll get his chance in the job that he's done. And a lot of good give and take with Tom Brady and a lot of learning off each other. Each other, I agree. I think Byron's learned from Tom, but I think Tom's also learned from Byron. Ball is... They're going to keep it going. Looked like it might have been an incomplete pass. I think these officials are about ready to call it a day, too. They just said, let's, let's let that clock run a little bit. <laughs> let's see. Yeah, it was a good, good no call, yeah. good no whistle. There you go. Right, Mike? <laughs> and now they're moving it back. Well. Nick Sirianni still arguing with the official. Pass is to Devontae Smith, who gets a hit from Jordan Whitehead as a parting shot. As the clock hits zeros. And the Tampa Bay Buccaneers win it by 16, and Bruce Arians' team is moving on. He and Nick Sirianni will come together. That's who Bruce is looking for. Anybody seen Nick? <laughs> we'll give you the play of the game brought to you by DirecTV Stream. Tom Brady, Rob Gronkowski, the touchdown. And the 15th time they've hooked up for a touchdown in the postseason. Coming up next, the State Farm postgame show. 31-15 is the final, and thank you for watching this Fox NFL special. The defending Super Bowl champs moving on. Saturday, February 5th, Keith Thurman is back, and he's taking on former champion Mario Barrios live on pay-per-view. Buy now on a Fox.